Hi and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and today is the first part of the build series of the Edward M4A1 kit number 3716 which is a um, rebox of the Tasca slash Asuka M4A1 kit. So already done the intro video um, in that intro video, I posed the question and I asked if the viewers wanted or determined doing the complete build. So we're doing the complete build and then my question was, do I stop at paint, doing a step by step, and then do the weathering part as more of an update kind of thing because it can get kind of slowed up doing the um, weathering portion of the video. Uh, it's a little harder to film or video and all that kind of stuff or beginning to end including weathering so uh, most of my responses were yes indeed let's see all of it including weathering so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the step by step by step all the way up to paint and that will be like uh, the first portion of the series of videos and then I will start on the weathering and do that as another portion of video so if a person wanted to watch just the build portion up to paint um, and then do their own weathering thing or whatever a person could do that if a person just wants to see how I weather the tank because they've already built one or whatever then they can watch that as a separate portion so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it all one big long series and then when I do a playlist I think I'll divide it uh, I'll have three playlists one with build up to paint and then another one with the weathering and then another one with all of it together if somebody wants to follow along so enough of that that's what's going to happen kind of the best of both worlds for everybody so without further ado let's take a look at the instructions and start building the kit all right so step one i've already determined that i am going to do um in the markings portion whoops i am going to do markings uh, under the D category, which is 13th Armored Regiment, 1st Armored Division, Anzio, Italy, March 1944. That is the one I'm going to do. So, when I start the kit, I need to make sure that I am paying attention where there are differences in markings A and C or markings B and D. So, these are the ones I'm going to be focusing on. So, these are the parts I need for the first portion. So it's all the E parts. So get those cut off of the sprue thusly. <clears throat> all right, so I got all the parts cut off and um, all the parts are cut off, cleaned up and first part is this here which is c43 which is the one i want to use since i'm doing uh the d version all right so i've test fit the part and it's pretty dandy so put my cement in here thusly and this side here is a little bowed up, so I'm going to make sure I smash it down so it lays flat. And the nice thing about the way they do these instructions is they tell you kind of the order in which to do it. So step one is putting this part in. Step two is this. Step three is this. So you can get them all lined up and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this in place, make sure it's lined up, do some cement in there. And even though this is like, you know, really Jelly Joe fast setting cement, 
I'll still be able to work it around to make sure it fits the side like that. Just like that. Okay. So I'm going to start at the front here. <clears throat> Make sure that's nice and solid. And then do this part here. And then that part there. So that gives us a good basis to start. And it's kind of cool because these fit right into there. So it gives you a nice, secure, non-guesswork kind of uh, connection point. All right, step three is the other side. Sorry, hold that in place like that, and that, and then do the side like that. Gives you a nice solid base there. Okay, next step four is the back plate. And what I'll want to do is just do one side at a time, make sure that the bend in this plate here matches the angle here. Squeeze it together. A little bit of glue on the outside there that'll evaporate so there's no no worry there don't get all freaked out if it happens make sure the bottom is lined up just do one side at a time and uh, everything will be just grand okay so There, and I'm going to go ahead and run some cement along that bottom seam there where that back plate meets the lower hull. Make sure it's all squeezed together nice and even. All right, so there's that. So the next part, step five, is E10, spots inside here, and, <clears throat> excuse me, it's got these awesome little points where they line up, so it gives you a nice, solid connection. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to glue it here and here first. and then worry about the front edge here after this cures up a little bit. See if I can do it so you can see it.
trying to hold in a way that you can see what's going on here. Check something here. Yep, that needs to go on top. <clears throat> Almost messed that up. That's why I pays to check the instructions. So there's a notch underneath here that this part right here fits up against. Okay. So that's what you got to watch for because you see this little ridge right here lines up with the lower hole so you get a nice straight edge. Something to pay attention to. So let me re-cement this back here. Squeeze it all together, make sure it's all good. And then I'm going to run the cement. Like that. Okay. Hold it in place for a minute. Make sure it's all stuck. And let that dry for a second and then I'll move on to the other side. All right, so let's get the other side done here. side here like that hold that while it dries all right the next parts are the um, the next step is the parts for the back of the hull so first things I'm going to do are uh, E7 which are the clevis mounting points and there is a bit of a seam line so that needs to be removed and this is the type of stuff I use like and I like using the flat edge of my blade to remove it instead of trying to sand it because I risk uh, rounding off these edges I don't want to do that so I'll just do like this and hope I don't launch it into oblivion okay there we go all right so there's two sides there's one with the hole one without the hole make sure you put the right side in like that now what I like to do on these parts because they're they're supposed to be welded on on the real vehicle 
So I like doing is when I can, I just kind of hold it in place there. And if, hopefully you can see down in there, if it's, uh, all the way through I like to put some cement on the inside and see if it will seep enough on the outside that you can really smash it into place because of the uh, melting action of the cement and it kind of uh, melts the plastic around the edge so you get more of a simulated weld look to it instead of just <coughs> looking like a seam all the way around it. Same thing, just hold in place, make sure my finger's not actually on the surface of the hole. You can probably see down in there a little bit better on this one, right there. Put a good little dollop of cement on there. Hold it for a second. And then use my tweezers to kind of smash it into place and it kind of bonds that on there a little bit better so you don't end up with a with a seam around it. <coughs> so then I take these clevis hooks here and I've already kind of cleaned them up. I need to trim off a little bit more. carefully sand that top edge because if you don't you're going to end up with some spots that are going to when you start weathering unless you muddy it up pretty good you might see that residual plastic <laughs> the more you cut it out the sprue and then making sure these are dry just kind of snap these whoops into place and see that one moved so I'm gonna let that sit there for a second dry up a little bit more so in the meantime I'm going to cut or uh, clean up these other back parts now what I'd like to do I don't like to be fumbling around with a bunch of little parts all the parts that go on the left I cut them all apart and keep them together. Same with the parts on the right. Keep the right side parts together. That way you don't have to worry about mixing anything up. Oops. there we go man and you got to be careful because boy those things will break because they're really super thin at the bottom and if you stretch if you spread them out too much then you're gonna you'll break them and then just put a little bit of dab of cement on there make sure they're kind of hanging perpendicular to the to the ground like that okay so while that's drying clean up these doors here for the engine compartment Okay, that's the left side door.
need to put a little more dab of cement on there because one side wasn't glued. Okay, let that dry for a second and then clean this door up. flash right there all right so before let's see no nope, I'm gonna do it this way there's a handle but I'm gonna put the door in place first before Before I put the handle on because I, I don't want to take a chance of snapping that off putting the door in place okay let's put that right there okay and then I've already cleaned this up Yeah, I'd be careful. These are really delicate because they're so thin. Okay. Hold it with my tweezers. Put a little dot of cement on each contact point lined up and then kind of smashed into place just like that other welded part so I'm gonna let that cure up just for a minute before I start working on these other parts all right so I've already got these two parts uh, in place C23 and C34 and um, just clean them up <clears throat> like usual Now, it also calls for part C25 on both sides, and that is the part that the uh, um, idler wheel actually attaches to. But I am not going to put those in place yet, and the reason I'm not is because um, I'm going to wait a little bit later when I get the tracks assembled, since I'm using individual length tracks um, instead of the uh, one piece stretchy kind. Uh, I want to make sure that the tracks are properly tensioned before I start gluing everything into place. Reason being is on Sherman tanks, as I'm sure a lot of you know, but Sherman tanks did ha didn't have a bunch of sag going on in uh, on their tracks. Uh, they're what's referred to as live tracks, and they stay tensioned up really pretty good, unlike say you know german or russian vehicles from the time who had uh tracks that generally had sag so let's see if i can get this parts in place here yeah the other one popped right in and this one is going to give me grief there we go all right and i'm just going to use my tweezers
kind of squish it into place and make sure they're bottomed out. Uh, I think I'm going to use my little screwdriver here to make sure it's bottomed out. There we go. That one is being stubborn. There we go. All right, so I'm going to apply the cement on the inside where the holes are here. on the bottom where it won't be as visible and then this part here there's a bit of a sinkhole right there since it's on the bottom and it's going to be covered by weathering and stuff I am not I'm going to take the time to fill it. Now, the reason I'm going to wait on these parts is the pin that goes into this part here and the axle that comes out they're offset so you can it's kind of a cam effect you can twist it in a way that'll push the the um, idler back toward the rear of the vehicle which will give you a little bit more tension on the tracks it's kind of an adjustable thing okay so that is that. So I'm going to set that aside to dry up for a bit and uh, <clears throat> start working on the air cleaners. So I'm going to start cutting those parts off and getting those ready. It looks like we've got some PE, so we'll take a look. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> the um, air cleaners. Cut these parts off. There's some PE involved, so we'll get that ready and. Uh, symbol those okay so I've got the air cleaner air cleaner parts removed and cleaned up it's not just a matter of assembling them got, there's only one locating pin right down here in this corner so it gives you a point to start with that lined up and then just get the rest of it lined up as best you can and uh, put some cement on there and just make sure you keep this round stuff and the flat parts on the edge lined up and then the bottom of the air cleaner it has these little ears that's part of the uh, holders that hold those in place on the air cleaners make sure those are 12 o'clock 6 o'clock 3 o'clock 9 o'clock and an inconspicuous spot put some cement on there let that dry up and you'll end up with one of these 
So, the next part is the photo edge. So, this is some tiny, tiny, tiny stuff. I.e. these parts right here, PE40. So I've cut one off right here and as you can see that is a very 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 small piece and the way it goes in this case the hook part fits right here as illustrated and this part bottom fits down here on those little tabs so like that now you can see there is a little bit sticking up on the top that is supposed to be there according to those illustrations there is a strip that sticks up off the top of this hook part okay now you will have on the side of this little hook part a little piece of excess and what i do to clean that up is using this is where something like this comes in real handy put it in there and maneuver it around to where the only part that's sticking out is that excess and you clamp it together and then use a very fine file or sanding stick and file that part off but this is one tiny piece Okay, so it goes right there like that. Now I think, see normally I would use super glue, but in a case like this, this is so small, I think super glue, even the ultra thin, would just be way, way too much. It would be kind of a clumped up mess. So I'm going to use it's commonly referred to future floor polish I use that for gloss coats and stuff like that and it can also be used to glue photo wedge in place so I've got that on there let's see if I can keep from dropping it and let me get my future see what we can do all right I've got my little teeny tiny 10 zero brush put it in there and very carefully oh man put a drop on there now, as you can see, it's seeping all over tarnation, but as this stuff dries, it should pretty much vanish. So we will see if that is what happens. Clean my brush, because I'm gonna do these one at a time, because they're very, very, very delicate and tricky. What I'm doing here, since there is a lot of excess on here, I'm using that little brush to just kind of spread it evenly. That way when it dries, it should be tacked nicely into place. And it'll be glossy, but paint's gonna cover it up, but it's not gonna cover up the detail of that little part. All right, I got those glued on, or futured on. So now, 
I'll put it onto the side plate. Thusly. And then this. I'm going to sit down and let it dry for a sec. Okay, and then this lines up on here. Turn around, whoops. Like that. So. Just like that. Okay, so now all I have to do is just do the other side that I won't show on camera since I just demonstrated the whole thing. So that takes care of steps one and steps two. So the next time we will be moving on to the front part of the hull with the transmission cover and then be moving on to upper hull detail parts and then the upper hull onto the lower hull. So that is it for today in the step-by-step -step Sherman M4A1 by Edward. So as always if you have any questions or comments, tips, hints, anything like that, please put them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So until the next part, I will see you all later.